She pleaded guilty to racketeering and could have faced 17 years. She was given just three years because uh, she helped make the case against Ranieri and because the judge considered Mac a victim herself. She was released from a federal prison in California on Monday. I want to bring in Nexium cult survivor Sarah Edmondson. She was trapped and brainwashed by Mac and Ranieri and later wrote the book Scarred, the true story of how I escaped Nexium, the cult that bound my life. Uh, Sarah, thank you so much for being here. Obviously, you're an inspiration to so many, the way you've been able to overcome what you went through. I want to ask you, what, what was your reaction uh, to Mac's early release? Thanks for having me. Uh, I have a lot of mixed feelings, a lot of emotions right now. Uh, I think the primary emotion is I'm, I'm really glad. I'm really, it's, it's hard even to say happy. I just want Allison to be out and to be free and to be able to move on with her life. And so it's every time there's, this is in the news cycle again, it brings up a lot of, a lot of feelings, but really I just, I'm, I'm happy for her that she can get her life back right now. So you've been able to for forgive her? And in my heart, yes, I still believe, you know, that there's legal complications with it, which obviously she's paid her debt to society by serving time in prison and, and owning her mistakes, which, which takes a lot of courage and a lot of people in, in this case in particular weren't able to do so. Uh, in that way and in her role in the case, I feel like I've removed any ill feelings towards her in that way, yes. And I know, Sarah, that you keep in touch with a lot of the other victims. Do they share that belief with you? Or, uh, you know, is there anger that she's getting out early? Generally, I would say, and to be honest, I'm not in touch with everybody. We've all kind of had to go our own way in our own respective journeys. But I'd say generally people feel that, you know, she was a victim too. There is this very complicated nature of the case with victim perpetrator. And I think what's key to note is that as appeared was the case at her sentencing, she was aware of her role and, and, and really owned that and took responsibility. And I think in that sense, when people do that regarding Keith, there's a level of forgiveness mm. and understanding. Was it a surprise to you that she got out on Monday? Did they warn the victims ahead of time? I did not know that, but we had heard rumblings that that would be the case, given her good behavior and her role in the case and her apologies to the people that she hurt. I mean, just again, your story is incredible, the way you've been able to come out uh, on the other side of this and try to help others despite everything horrible that happened to you. I mean, even the fact that your, your skin was burned and the way you were dehumanized. Uh, you know, how do you do that? I mean, is it just part of the healing process for you? I, I always wonder with victims of this kind of thing, how they're able to like overcome something so awful. I think it's been different for everybody. For me, I, I personally, I had the brand removed. I had plastic surgery, which was really key in my healing journey. I've done a lot of things. It's a daily practice, it's therapy, time in nature, everything from yoga to Epsom salt baths, a lot of self-care and a lot of understanding how of how cults and coercive control, yeah, there's the brand, it's gone now. Uh, but yeah, learning learning how these things have, um, have such a control over people's minds, how it comes to pass and how people can heal from it. Uh, talking to other ex-members of other groups on our podcast, so a little bit culty, that's also been a big part of my healing journey and has brought me a true connection to a real community and not a community run by a sociopath. Yeah. So that's that's key. Yeah, I understand. And I, I, I understand the way that you connect with, with the other survivors. I'm just, I'm wondering with, with Allison Mack, also in a way, as you say, being a victim, um, mm -hmm. would you ever want to connect with her at this point? Would that be too painful? Absolutely. Is that something you would be open to? I honestly have recurring dreams about it. I would love to, as soon as we're allowed to, I know there's a lot of restrictions uh, from our lawyers, but as soon as we're allowed to, I would love to um, connect with her and hug her and, 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 I'm gonna cry just thinking about it. I'd, I'd really, I'd like that one day when it's when it's permitted. Yeah, I wonder um, if that would help with the healing process, sort of for oh, for, for both of you. Yeah, closure is important. I mean, she she sang at my wedding. We traveled together. She was a friend of mine for over a decade. It would, I never got to say goodbye or anything. So I'd like that. And and, and just quickly, you mentioned the podcast. Um, you know, are there any red flags for people out there? Because um, cults come in all different shapes and sizes and forms. And, you know, you have a friend and you realize that they're gravitating towards a certain group that just doesn't feel right. I mean, are there red flags? What, what do you tell people? 
Oh yeah, I mean, there's there's many red flags. We 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 try to summarize it as best as we can into something succinct so that people can put those put those tools in their pocket when they go out into the world. But um, off the top of my head, I would say the major red flags is if it's very expensive. If there's uh, you know if you if you can you can't leave without being shunned or excommunicated. If there is a leader that you can't question. Um, where there isn't transparency in the organization. I mean, there's there's so many very specific red flags. I actually on my uh, on my website I have a list of resources and all sorts of uh, places where people can go if they want to know more about the groups that they're a part of and if perhaps they might be a little bit culty or or full on cults because they are everywhere and they don't look like what they used to. Yeah, it really is scary, and oftentimes it's really really intelligent, put together, successful people. <laughs> Um, that end up uh, in these cults, and it's just, it's terrifying. Uh, Sarah Edmondson, thank you so much for joining us tonight. We really appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me. All the best. Thank you so much. Thank you for watching. Go to newsnationnow.com to find News Nation on your television provider, and don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.